Hey Cactus friends, it's Jenny from Cookies Cacti. You may be wondering where in the world I am and I'm at the Desert Botanical Garden. I'm in the area where the spring plant sale will be happening from, I believe, March 14th through the 17th. You see all the tents out there? They're empty right now because I'm here almost two weeks ahead of time. And by the time this video comes out, it will be about less than a week out from the sale starting. I am here because I have been invited by the Central Arizona Cactus and Succulent Society and the Desert Botanical Garden to give you all a preview of the plants for the upcoming spring sale. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kenny Zalov. I'm uh, a 12-year uh, employee of the Desert Botanical Garden and um, we're here out, out at our nursery right now. This is our, our DBG nursery that's been in operation for about a year and a half. It used to be, and you'll see as we walk around, it used to be a community garden space for um, an initiative that we did a while back to, to start a community garden. And then um, during COVID, things changed a bit and this space became available for um, a nursery. So that's when the idea of using this, this came about. So it was about three years ago. And the best thing about the space, and you'll see is there's a, uh, there's a, a fence around the whole thing, a perimeter fence around the whole thing. And that keeps out the rabbits and the, uh, the squirrels for the most part and rats and so forth. <laughs> so, that gives us a space where we can really take advantage of, uh, of a protected area. And then over time, over the last about year and a half, we've built out these structures. We have about, I think about 4,500 feet under, um, under protected area and a little shade house that was relocated from our propagation area. So, um, so I can talk a little about what this space is, kind of how it evolved and what we have in here. So, um, so it's, it's, it's again, it's a nice protected space, so it gives us the ability to grow out some things. Uh, in here, we, we have plants that are leftovers from previous plant sales. So sometimes plants don't come from, a, they'll come from a supplier and they might not take them back after the sale, so it's not a consignment relationship. So in that case, we keep the plants and we store them between the fall and the spring sale or the spring and the, uh, the fall sale. So that's what one part of what this represents. And then additionally, we have um, plants that we're growing for the sale, specifically for the sale. And you'll see as we walk around, we can look at it later, but a couple different brands have evolved, things that we're trying to, to focus on and grow out here. So we have plants that, grow, that are grown specifically from seed or cuttings or divisions that, um, that come specifically from the garden. So these are things that maybe we've collected seed from a boojum tree, or maybe we've collected seed from tree aloes or those type of things. Um, and then we started to propagate them and make them available for the sale. So it's kind of neat in that you can essentially own a piece of the garden, you know, a piece of history, something that actually came from the garden. So that's our garden signature. And at the sale, if you come, you'll see anything that has an orange label on it. Um, along with the name, those are our garden signature plants. And at this sale, and the third piece that we keep in this area are the garden preferred. This is a new, a new sort of uh, branded line that we're trying to create. And these are things that like, we also like the other brand, we're, we're growing them here on site, but they didn't necessarily originate from garden seed. So I may have purchased seed or I may have collected seed from, from another grower or something like that. So we can't officially say that they came from the garden, but they were here grown at the garden. So those are, those are green tags and we'll see some of those too. So we've got garden preferred, garden signature, and then the white label things, those are typically things that came from outside suppliers. So you can get a feel as you go through the sale of maybe where some of these things came from and, uh, and it gives you a better understanding. But we're trying to grow things that are maybe hard to find in the trade or maybe, you know, boojum trees you can find in the trade, but often you find they're $5,000 and they're four feet tall. So we want to fill a little bit of a niche and start to grow some things, maybe at smaller sizes. Another one that we've had success with are aloe ramesissima and aloe dichotoma, two things that, again, you can find, but if you don't want to spend a few hundred dollars, then you're kind of out of luck. So we've been growing those, successfully growing those, and we'll see those too as we walk around. But things that are, <laughs> you have one. Cool, so, it, you know, and it's nice to know that that plant came from the garden. Or the seed came from the garden and we've grown it out. And that explains the orange tag. Yeah, that's the orange tag. And we're doing, trying to do a better job of getting the word out to people as to what those are, because they might not have a connection between that. And sometimes it's in our publications and stuff, but you know, people don't always read everything, neither do I, so. <laughs> it's all succulent. That's a good point. I'm glad you said that because we, we're not, 
currently not growing any uh, herbaceous plants or, or leafy plants or shrubs or trees um, for the sale. It's just a different monster, as you know, because watering care and everything. So in this area, we can get away with with me taking care of the whole thing and <laughs> and we don't have irrigation systems other than just a, a, you know hand watering so around the time of of uh of well i can remember the date exactly it was <laughs> march 2020 march 20th 2020 when when covid was just at its infancy we had to make a tough decision are we going to have the sale or are we not going to have the sale we literally had the whole lot set up everything was ready to go and at the last I think a day before it was supposed to happen, we had to cancel it. So we had a dilemma because here we had all these extra plants that some of them couldn't go back to the supplier. So we had to ask ourselves, well, what are we going to do with this? We had no outlet for selling it. So we scrambled, really scrambled to try to figure out how to do this. And we ended up putting plants here and there and everywhere. And it was a mess and we lost a lot of things and, and, uh, and it was a challenge. So it kind of raised a flag for us. So, you know, what do we do if, we need to store extra plants. What do we do if there's leftovers? And we've always just sort of worked them into the propagation section, but we never really had a good solution for it. So that's when the idea of maybe having a permanent space for the nursery uh, came about. And and so since that time, we've we developed a, a more of an understanding of maybe having a nursery space would make sense. Um, not conventional nursery space in that we're not having customers out here yet. You know, who knows what the future might hold. But but this was a good, useful space. It used to be for our, our on-site community garden, but that program during COVID had to be put on hold space. So what, what we did is we took this space, which already had the fencing, which was great. And it already had this little arbor here, this little wooden arbor, a little tool shed. But the rest of it was really turned upside down. And these used to be raised beds and they used to be uh, growing veggies and every now and then a tomato will pop up <laughs> I think from seeds and water but we we graded the space and then over the last year and a half we've turned this into a more functional space and uh, and then over time we've really reached I think we've already kind of reached capacity <laughs> um, and there are plans for maybe some more space for me in another area but for now this is what we have I think it's about 9,000 or so square feet um, it's it's really nice and and we made it really well through the summer it uh, it held up nicely and uh, it's amazing what just good consistent shade can do for your plants and um, you know it was still it doesn't it didn't negate the 118 degree yeah. temperatures and the 90 degree nights constantly but but we found that we lost a lot less plant material in here than say in the garden where it was much more exposed and still thank you what do you was like how much of those specimens were safe, were able to survive? I would say probably 95%, yeah. <clears throat> we just, and, it, and you know, as a new propagator, because this is something relatively new for me, I learn lessons too, and certain things don't want to be out in the summer. So that combination of nighttime heat and then figuring out the right amount of water, all that stuff. So I think some of that could have been avoided, but but we did pretty well overall okay. considering how hot and nasty it was. Nice. But uh, yeah, this space has been real successful and, and, and it's again, still kind of in its infancy. So we're figuring it out. But I have a couple wonderful, about five wonderful volunteers that help me. So just me as a full-time person, but then we have some, some other help and, okay. uh, and it, that makes a huge difference because they're, they're knowledgeable people who care about what they do and and, uh, and it makes it fun and, and got some expertise too. We've got people who know cactus and bedeniums and agaves and all that stuff. So yeah, so, yeah, let's see it. Um, it's, it's not particularly organized one way or another, but kind of. You know, we've got um, a big group of agaves here, Hesperalo, yuccas, things like that. I, I find that um, just functionally it's better to have the bigger plants on the ground rather than on a table because the tables will eventually collapse right. <laughs> under the weight of the plants. I see some beautiful mammalaria. <laughs> yeah, so, so you know, it helps too because if we have leftovers from the sale, we don't necessarily have to bring that same plant back the next time. So it's a, it's a good way of just knowing that, that we'll always have material. And, and, and I try to be savvy in that I'm always looking at availability lists from suppliers and always looking for cool things. And if something shows up on a list three or four months before the sale, I might pick it up and just start keeping it here. So I'm always on the lookout for cool stuff. <laughs>
platforms are they just coming uh, for those third party vendors are they just coming from all over the place mostly uh there's there's Tucson Phoenix um like the Vista area in San Diego that's the bulk of it uh i don't like to go too far and and you really can't because it's not functional or it's not feasible i should say but even have some yuccas that come from texas uh but we're pretty selective we want to make sure the suppliers understand what we're doing and, and why we're doing it. we're not getting field collected plants we're not you know these are all things that we know the origin does important to us so so yeah we're we're careful with that i know that's really important this year for the the show and mini sale that's coming up in may um and i believe the garden will be supplying uh, or having a, a mini the mini sale will be supplied by the garden Right, that's actually going to be me. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now that you mentioned it, yeah, I'm going to for the first time I'm going to be involved with that show and sale as a vendor and because of circumstances I'll be the only the garden will be the only vendor this time. So, so we'll have a sampling um of sort of a mini plant sale of what we have and and I, if I can I'll try to emphasize the unique plants and things. I know the collectors are this that group is not you know your run of the mill group they want they want unique things and i'll do the best i can um it's you know truthfully it's not the same as bringing in all those wonderful vendors but at least it's a taste of it and it'll be something yeah look forward to that part <laughs> so we're going to walk through some of these plants or at least as much as we can as you all know how i am when it's so overwhelming we kind of do what we can <laughs> um wow this is so special that we can do this preview. Um, we're actually in an area off of where the sale would be. I think the sale's over there. There's a parking lot over there where the sale takes place. And so these plants are all away from that area. Um, but you can see, what do you think the shade cloth percentage is of this? I use a 40% shade cloth up there. And the fact that I, I think the fact that it's 10 feet above the ground really helps too. So That's interesting. Yeah, it, it, it creates a little buffer, it creates plenty of, you know, air movement and, and everything. And I've had good success. I, I, again, like I said before, I'm still learning, but I think this has been, this has been a good, a good experiment, a positive one. <laughs> yeah. And in the, in the winter time, do you do anything special for these plants or they, they, they just sit out here? For the most part, they sit out here uh, behind us. Um, you can see we have one shade house that does offer me the, the opportunity to put plastic over it. So in that area, when we get in there, you'll see I have a lot of adeniums and things that are a little more tender. Uh, because interestingly enough, this space, because it, of its the fact that it's in the corner of the garden, there's no concrete around us, there's very little trees, uh, it does get about four to five degrees colder than some of the other areas in the garden. And that's a problem, as you know, for propagation, because um, that little bit of just below freezing can be an issue. So I've been trying to understand and learn about that too, but but that's where the little the shade house helps us. Well, when you do have, or when we do drop below 32 degrees or below freezing, are these ones that are sitting out here left where they are, or is there like shade cloth, or not shade cloth, a frost cloth or anything put on them? A little bit here and there. I have a couple tables of aloes. Those are the ones that I usually worry about. But I try to put as much as I can in that shade house there because I can close that up and keep the temperatures above freezing and that helps a lot. So pretty much everything that's out here, you know that they can take it uh, at least because we don't drop too low, right? We're not below 20 or 25 or very rarely. I keep a data logger out here. So I know that the coldest it's gotten, I think was about 26 for maybe an hour. So it was below freezing for uh, a few hours, but I, I only saw minimal damage and okay. it wasn't too bad. Fortunately, you know, you never know what could happen, but so far I've been lucky. Um, have you had any issues with um, like fungus breakouts? Or I've been struggling a lot with rust fungus this year, um, especially astrophyte, and they were hit really hard. Um, any issue, but not everything was hit, just some genus were especially susceptible to the rust fungus. Um, any issues out here? No, not really. I, I had one, I can even show you when we get there, one group of plants that did show that, but um, some red barrels of all things. But um, <laughs> What do you do about it? you treat it or just kind of let it do yeah. its thing? In this case, I didn't do anything. I think what I'm going to do as a result is, is use it as an opportunity because it's mostly at the tips is I'm going to cut them okay. and see if I can get multi-headed red barrels in the future. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Yeah. Maybe I should do that. But this is um, 
these are just a typical organ or what do we call it uh, Argentine giant excuse me but um, these you'll see have the orange tags on them and you know this is not a particularly unusual or rare plant as you know but the fact that these came from the garden is kind of fun and this was the reason we have so many is we had to, we're doing a currently doing um, a large renovation in the garden and the other op we had we had to remove this plant so instead of just removing it and throwing away we made a couple hundred cuttings and and now these plants are ready for for you know sale in a short time so do they happen to be near the cactus collection house That's exactly where they were <laughs> you probably know the big plant it was a really really big one and and it was too big to move at that point yeah. we can't move it so we just chopped it up. so we chopped it up we kept some for our collection and we kept most of them we, most of them became built for the sale so yeah, they're they're about a year removed from being cut, and uh, and now they're starting to really fill out. So you could really own a piece of the garden, literally. I think so. Maybe it sounds hokey, but I, <laughs> I think it's kind of neat. <laughs> I think it's kind of neat, and and uh, you know, again, you could buy this plant from many nurseries, but knowing that the origin is from the DBG, there's a little bit of something there again. So there's some history behind these. So if, if you all are at the spring sale, I guess by the time this video comes out, it'll be next week. Um, you can keep an eye out for these giant trichocereus uh, cuttings from the garden itself. Very special. Wow, look at these. Uh, was it Notocactus or Parodia linenhousii? These are, s I mean, these are old, <laughs> right? These are probably, they are, they're and huge. You know, and you know what's funny is, is, we were just having a conversation, my volunteers and myself, about both the two plants that you're seeing here. Both, like you said, old and, and maybe not rare per se, but yeah. big specimens. And I haven't been able to sell them at the sale for the life of me. So maybe this group can help me with that this time. Because one, one volunteer said, well, the ones on the right, the, the brown ones, they look like they're dead. And, and I said, it never, yeah, I said, it never occurred to me that they look like they're dead. That's their color. And uh, it's funny, it's just the perception sometimes of, of people who may not be in the know of, of what things look like and what the, the perception is that this one looks dead. So so I'm going to have a whole bunch of those in the discount area this time. Oh my gosh, that's a reason just to come to the sale load. Wait, these are marked to $40. I the discount are probably 15 or 20 Oh my gosh, maybe I'll get one. Exactly. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I mean, look at this. This is a specimen. If you buy one, keep it for at least six months, and then you can, this will be your specimen plant at the next show and sale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, this is it's so fun to see the behind the scenes of this. See, so these are all white tags. Just for us, do these come from? Um, is it? It's not Shady Way, but you're absolutely right. It is a, the whole sale. Yes. So these were from a couple years ago before they they closed. Um, they shut down the business. So I bought a, a much bigger order than order than normal, knowing that I would have these for maybe a couple of years. So so these are from Shady Way exactly. So their wholesale business is gone now. Oh, their retail went first, and then now their wholesale is it gone? It is gone, too. There's a, a woman who was an employee of theirs who's carrying it on to a small degree, and um, so we'll hopefully be able to continue to get cool plants from them, but kind of under a different leadership, and and, uh, and, and we'll see. I'm not sure what the future holds, but but uh, but yeah, good eye. These okay. are definitely yeah, because I, I take the audience around shopping to all, all the nurseries that I know of in the Phoenix area. Maybe not all of them, but the ones I know about. And in Tucson, too. And you see these, like, this gallon pot is just so distinctive. <laughs> and the way that the white X is marked on the, like, two-gallon pot. And I'm like, I think these come from Shady Way. Um, yeah. Haha, -ha, we have confirmed. <laughs> There's a green tag if you want to know. Okay. So this again is the, the garden preferred. So these are plants that didn't originate from the garden, but we've grown out here. And this is a fun one. This is a uh, a hybrid golden barrel, red barrel mix. So um, I don't think it has an official name, but it's a it's it's basically a golden red barrel. <laughs> Strange looking one. It's got a uh, you know the golden barrel look, but the red spines coming out. And um, so these are something that we don't have a whole lot of, but these will be at the sale. Um, in uh, two-gallon containers, 
and I think they're pretty neat. It's a little different than the regular Golden Barrel. Let me do some close-ups. I'm going to show you all some close-ups of this. This is very special because I don't think I've ever seen a golden and a red barrel combined because you can see the two colors of the spines on the plants. I think this is the first time that I've ever seen this and you all can see that it has the green tag on it which Kenny explained earlier. Oh. This is very unusual. I don't think I've ever seen this before. And behind you, we have another unique one. These are, these are, these are, these were from seed. If you're familiar with the garden, you'll know in the succulent gallery, we have a really huge aloe Hercules. And this was seed that was collected from that aloe Hercules. Now, knowing that aloe Hercules is a hybrid, that means that when we collect seed from a hybrid, we don't know exactly what we're going to get. We could get uh, either either of the two parents could could show themselves. So this was a bit of an experiment. Let's see what we get. So I've, I've had these for, I think, going on a, a second year now. And before I, I completely put them out at the sale, I want to learn a little more about them. But you can see some are more spiny than others. Some are have like a red margin on them. Um, so there's gonna, it's a it's a hybrid hybrid. It's an F2. So um, it's something that's that's unique and, and unique to that specific plant. There's one over in the back there that's just super spiny. I don't know if you can oh, see that one. See can... Is it this one? Yeah. Oh, this is all I can get reaching my arm. Let me go do it. Oh yeah, there is a heart on there. So uh, are these seed grown by the garden? Yeah, these were seed. Are they just a couple years old at this just point? Just a couple years old. Yeah, they do. And and, and I should add that we also have, um, we do a, a little bit of contract growing with some other growers that grow. We provide our seed to them, they grow, and then we buy them back. Um, some of these actually, I said, I may have misspoken. They, some of these were grown by, if you know, Steve Plath. Yes. Steve Plath grew these for us. We grew them back. There's a mix in, in here of both stuff that we've grown and he's grown. But uh, what I think is fun is you just get so much variability you don't know. I just want to make sure it's a hardy enough plant before we put it out at the sale. And some look a lot like Dichotoma in there, I'm looking, and some look more like Hercules, but who knows? We'll see what you get. <laughs> That's the most fun of hybrids because I have a lot of Astrophytum and I they're just they're already hybrids and then I cross-pollinate them and they create seeds and you just have no idea what you're gonna get. It's so much fun. But it's people who like to stick with true species, they probably are not a fan of that kind of no. uh, growing. But it's fun. That's all I can say. It is fun. And when I throw a label on this, I, I'm calling it Aloe Hercules hybrid. But but I don't know that everybody will understand that, but that's that's what I'm trying to trying to convey. <laughs> I'm already seeing some plants that I'm very interested in. This is what, uh, Mammillaria retiriana. Oh, Huizilla pochlei. I need a mate for my Huizilla pochlei, so I probably will buy one of these. Oh, oh, this is, this is Perez de la Rosa, probably. Probably. Got it. Yep. Wow, oh, they're all in bloom. Look at that. So these will cute. All be out at the sale. These were left over from the previous sale, but we've cared for them over the the, the, the winter, excuse me, and they'll all be out there. Wow, I see some, uh, is this plumosa? It's a nice plumosa clump. Look at you guys, we get to have a preview, it's so cool. And then I will go to the show, or to the sale myself, and then we'll do a shopping video too. Yeah, I see some. <laughs> Sampling of some of the, the discount stuff. These are things that don't all look great, but but we'll give them a try and see if someone's interested in nursing them back. And they're not unhealthy. They might have gotten chewed on or they might have, uh, you know, gotten a little sun exposure or something like that. But but uh, so you'll see those out at the discount area this time. This so is discount? Good. Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's, it's got... Dollars. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, yeah, but to me, it's like character. Or this one, this one's so tall. This isn't $5, is it? It is. Maybe I'll just take it now. <laughs> it's five dollars. Oh my gosh! If that's not reason enough, a lot of these look like they're probably Mario Stigma, but with something. Some of these might have something else in them. But oh, these are all discounts. My eyes are going crazy scanning for treasures. <laughs> oh, I see the horsey eye. Oh, I have a. I have one of these mammalaria. And this is that really funny Parodia or Nodocactus, I think. 
Hessel something, such as an H. Wait, these aren't discount though, right? These are the. Not over here. Okay. I recognize some of the horse DIs. I think I, I saw this last fall. I think they're just humongous horse DIs. And then the steno cactus, like they're in bloom. Wow. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. I mean, if you care about the look of the plant, the one thing that is really great about plants that maybe don't look the prettiest, but they're so heavily discounted and they're mature enough for flowering is that you can make seed. Just get two of these for $10 and you can make seed yourself. <laughs> Good plant. Yeah. Yeah, and you see many of them are growing out of whatever damage yeah you have. oh i love this one i it's can't hard to put that out even, even this one like yeah. it's already recovering no these will all be fine they just have a lot of character and it's funny if, if you're familiar with the garden you'll I, you might even know where these came from these were part of in the center for desert living area we have a big sundial i know exactly where oh, that is okay these were part of that and, and at some point we when it, the predation from the rabbits was getting too severe we took them out uh, but these were some that took a harder hit. So they they technically are from the garden as well. But I didn't put the special label on them because they're a discount. <laughs> were all the astrophyna removed from that area because of rabbits? Yeah. Oh, is there anything in its place now? No, we tried something else and it was even bigger failure. So right now I think it's just rocks. I, it's I, just I, getting harder and harder in some of those areas, especially without shade. So you got to choose things that are going to be able to withstand the summer sun and the rabbits. And, Everything else. There's some really cool agave back here as well. I bought um, like a discounted planter. Maybe it was just a, like a six dollar agave perii with the H, and I put it in the ground. It's doing great. And for those of you who have watched my garden tours, you would have seen it in the ground. That's beautiful, beautiful astrophyta. Wait, what is this? Is it Capricorn? But it looks like it's something beyond Capricorn because it's it's nude. Oh, yeah, it's nude. Weird one, huh? Yeah. That one came from, I believe, Steve Plath. He had grown that. It's like something special. Yeah, that's the... $12.50. And if you're a member of the garden, of the Desert Botanical Garden, you get 10% off discount. And there's no sales tax. Thank you for plugging that. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, you know, people always ask, are your prices good? Are your prices bad? And I always say the same thing. You know, if you ask 10 people, half of them might say one thing, the other half might say the other thing. And, but 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 like you said, Jenny, there there is a discount if you're a member and then there's no sales tax. And, and it is a fundraiser. That's the biggest thing I remind people of. This helps support the garden. And um, yeah, you can probably find some of this stuff cheaper at Dome Depot or, or somewhere else. Um, and and you know I wouldn't blame you if you if you if you purchased them from there, but this is a fundraiser and it's in support. Well, the thing is, I I'm a very regular like I constantly tour Home Depot, Walmart, and Lowe's, and there's a lot of stuff here that you can't find. Um, I mean, those are primarily grown by Altman, I think, and it's a lot of Mammillaria, some limited Gymnocalycium, and uh, you can't find. There's no way you can find um, some of these plants in the big box stores, and I go shopping all over the place for plants and I'd say these prices are pretty reasonable. Well good, I'm glad to hear that and and, and that's another thing we think that sets this sale apart is it's a one-stop opportunity to get a lot of these things that you could find if you toured 10 different nurseries um, and then knowledgeable people who can help you with making decisions and, and and that's that's important I think as well. Yeah and I would say like a lot of these big these big plants there's you're not going to find this stuff at big box stores there's no way. Absolutely no way. Oh, let's take a look. You got the Messina. Oh, I'll, I'll, my malaria is one of my favorite. Uh, Copiapoa is one of my favorites. Um, Aerial Carpus, I love. Um, and then Astrophytum. That's always a love. Uh, <laughs> and, I, and I grow a lot of plants from seed, but my growing area might be like maybe this and that's it <laughs> no, it's already too many plants <laughs> i have one of these these are really great and they're pretty easy it's a notocactus is it binguinii or something like bingii or yeah. bowingii this is a great one it's 
I don't do anything special, and it survived the summer, it survived the winter, and it's doing great. We have some astrophytum Ast hybrids. Yeah. These are all different. Astrophytum Asteria Super Caputo V type. These are $25. Again, no sales tax, and if you're <laughs> a member, you get 10% off. Let's see what else we've got here. Got some gymnos in the back. Are beautiful. Noto cactus. Oh, some battery. Let's see what else we've got here. Got beautiful domino cactus. Look, these look like Coripantha. And then we'll be back, uh, you know, and then when I go shopping again so we can look at these even more. But this is so fun to see this preview. Oh, look at that. Xenocactus or Echinophosula cactus in bloom. Beautiful. I got one of these last time in the fall. Doing fine. Good. Wow, these are some... Uh, yeah, they look really funny when they do that. You've got some short spined uh, golden barrels. $80. This is That's pretty awesome. big. Sure, actually, I'm growing. I, I was able to get a whole bunch of small ones, and we'll grow those out. And and I know that's a pretty pricey eighty dollars, but hope hope to have more in the future at a lower price. Uh, this these are probably one of the bigger specimens that I've seen for sale. So this is uh, not common to find the short spine ones at, at this price for this large, or even to find it this large. Oh, I see this uh, si sipho si serious bradii. This is something I'm kind of interested in. I'm always a little bit more concerned about the I think these are South American right but yeah. they seem to do okay here would you say well I've had success you know sometimes it's tricky I, would I put that in the ground well I'd probably have to do a little more research to understand that but it's it's done well here in the nursery in a pot and uh, probably something to, to, to do a little more uh, investigating on Tristan Davis would know but and you know they're in gallon pots and it's $25 which is not that bad I don't think that's that bad. That's worth trying. Here's a big sampling of some of the uh, the Alloramicissima that we've been growing. These are going on about two and a half years old, and these are one of our garden signature items. So these were from seed collected here at the garden, and I hope to have you know that's a plant you'll find, but often in bigger sizes. So we'll have one gallons, two gallons, five gallons, eventually some ten gallon ones, and. I'm pretty proud of these. I think they look great and uh, they're not something you, you see every day in, in smaller sizes. And they look great. Oh, these are the fancy Myrtillo cactus. Really fancy. Some nice crests. Ooh, some really nice ones. Oh, we've got some beautiful agave. Oh, a Mammillaria crest. That's unusual. And my eyes are just going. Oh, look at all these uh, rainbow hedgehogs. These are pretty big. I see a price on it. Yeah, these are 40. Okay, that's not bad for something that big. Wow, look how big that one is. Yeah, get the big get, get the big one first. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's some more astrophytum. Oh, some beautiful gym. Oh wow, that's a nice one. Gymno I bet it's like card uh Spegazini Cardensianum. $20, really thick spines. I have a tiny, like a teeny tiny one. They grow very slow for me, but but uh, pretty hardy. Let's see some candida. Some more agave. One of the things I hope to do in future sales is I've been able to get some, some little plugs of some more unusual agaves. And what, what you don't often see and agaves are, are varieties, unique varieties in one gallons. So my hope is that in the future, not so distant future, we'll have more opportunities to buy these in smaller sizes. So this is agave, agave of vatifolia, which you'll find, um, you know, in five gallon or 10 gallon, but not often in one gallon. So I think these will be ready for the sale in the fall, but we're gonna have probably 20 different varieties of different, harder to find in one gallon size containers. On the other side of the table, there's even more. Yeah, one gallon. a lot started now that'll be ready hopefully in the future. That's nice. Got some more agave. 
Oh, this is really pretty. Super pretty. It's interesting. Whoa! Is that a tephro cactus? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. It's huge. Whoa! Is this isn't for sale, is it? That one is not. <laughs> okay, it's like that, that, that is like that doesn't look like it's <laughs> probably for sale. There's a sampling behind oh. you of some of the different agaves I hope oh, man. at your sales in smaller sizes. I have I think I have one of these. These look really healthy and I like how they're pupping already. Look at that. Yeah, they look great. It's already pupping. Quick sampling. These gallon pots for Whoa, whoa, there's like a volunteer in there. That's pretty cool. Wow, these are really pretty. Ooh, that's very pretty. This is Agave Titanota. $20 with a green tag. Wow, that's really pretty. These are hard to find. I do not see these very often. This might be a Kichokan, maybe? Could be completely wrong. Oh, look at these big aloes. Beautiful. Some of these were leftovers from the last sale. And, and over the, the fall and winter, they've gotten bigger. So this probably, the prices didn't change. But there's, <laughs> that's it. a little more for your, for your buck here. I've noticed that um, the prices don't really change too much. Sometimes they just say static between, let's say, a fall, one year to the next. Yeah, you know, it's a tricky thing. We try to be competitive. Um, and uh, we and, and I don't like to raise the prices. You know, our prices often, especially when we're purchasing from suppliers, they're not certainly not getting any less expensive. So right. we're no. trying to be somewhat static. So I appreciate you saying that. No, it's been pretty good because I have, I mean, just inflation, right? Infl inflation alone, I've seen prices going up um, pretty much everywhere. <laughs> so it's very rare to see prices stay static in six months or even 12 months these days. Wow, look at these are more gallon agaves. You can see the orange tag on there. So now we know what that means. Looks like some propagation. Oh, I, I love it when there's like a mix of... Hey, there's a... Ele is it Dioscoria? Elephant tippies? That's a nice one. And then this is a... Oh, there's that Abuca spiralis maybe. Oh, and this is that... I forgot what it is. It's a funny... Uh, it starts with a... G or something, or something like that. Yeah, something like that. You can tell that the leaves are different. Oh, there's a, a probably a grafted guy. Some black and what's it? Black and blues. And that was only the first shaded area. <laughs> now we go to the second shaded area. I see a lot of agave. Oh, I see the rum runners over here. Those are one of my favorites. You can see more gallon pots of propagated agave in the back. Some of these look like they're part of a private collection. Yeah, those were okay. those I, I uh, someone donated them recently. I, I I wanted to wait and see what they do, what flower colors they get before I know what to do with them. But they were from a private collection, exactly. I see a lot of echinopsis in there. Got some euphorbia, some soft leaf succulents, which I cannot keep alive here in the summer. <laughs> there was a big bunch of of these that th these are, by the way, going to be in the discount tent, and not because there's anything wrong with them, but these were left over from our uh, luminaria display. If you were here over the winter, you saw we had a, a big uh, kind of a remnant, looks like a like a Christmas tree, and it was uh, it was decorated with all these succulent plants. Well, rather than just you know, giving those away or throwing them away, we we saved them and we're going to offer them at a discount. That they, uh, they're all fifteen dollars, and which I think is really even below cost. Um, and there's quite a few. There's a lot of mangaves we're going to have, um, and some of these echeverias, and then I think a few other things that were that were left over as part of those displays. I think that plant is probably at least eight inches, if not ten inches wide, because it's outgrowing a, probably a six-inch pot. Pretty big. 
it was the rust that I talked about and I it was I can't really explain it but it just seemed to hit that plant <laughs> they look kind of neat but I think I'm gonna gonna cut their heads off and <laughs> turn them into yeah. multis <laughs> might as well Moroccan, Moroccan mounds down here sorry y'all I keep forgetting my microphone I think I need to upgrade <laughs> to a better microphone I see some as an Appalanta, uh, Appalanata, Agave, one of my favorites. Golden Barrel, Crested Eve Needle, some Perii, Truncata. These are more of a sampling of the discount stuff that's going to end up oh. out there. Most of it has maybe a little sunburn or chewed or something, but um, but give them a little time and and they should be just fine. <laughs> I'm always for, I guess. They're not quite rescued because it's not like they're dying. They just have some marks on them. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah, there's those same parodias that we're going to offer at a discount. Let me check the price. Okay. $7.50 for something that big? That's like a five-gallon pot. Oh, my gosh. $7.50 for a specimen. Maybe we'll send you home with one of those today if you want it. <laughs> oh, y'all, <my God. laughs> oh, Boojum. <laughs> I love Boojum. Do you see the green tag? Wow, those are pretty big for $100. That's a pretty good price for something that big. There's 75 in the back. I have a special love for Boojum. Me too. Me too. So these, because again, because it was the green tag, that means we, we got them as a smaller plant. And grew them out. The ones just ahead are ones that we grew from our own seed. Yeah, if you all remember, I picked up one, uh, I think two of these. Well, one of the sales, I already forgot which one. It's probably a year ago. It's still alive and it's loving the winter. Yeah, this is their time. This is where they put on a lot of their growth right now. And we're going to have a whole bunch of one gallons too. They're not here where we're looking right now, but they'll be. So we'll have one gallon, two gallon, five gallon, and maybe even some bigger ones see some more plants which we're not going to walk through yeah. there's just a lot of plants back there for the sale so we gotcha, <laughs> just yeah. fill every square inch we had yeah. but you can see uh, uh, maybe you can't but there's some some of the early uh seedlings of some future boojums that'll be out at the sale and even some uh pachycormis which is a wonderful another cardisiform tree but well, we can go in this uh shade house let's go take a look Oh, for those Apuntia lovers, here's a little bit of love to the Apuntia. I know I always kind of brush over them or gloss over them too quickly, but a little bit for my Apuntia lovers. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> All right, we are inside this shade house or kind of a hoop house. I'll say a hoop house. It's got plastic over it right now. Oh, it is significantly warmer in here. Wow. Oh, I see. These are all the like more winter sensitive plants. So a lot of adenium. Got these giant aloe. All I've learned is I can't have I can't have adenium because I never remember to move them when it's winter and they just don't live. <laughs> Very sad. Yeah. Oh, there's some nice bonsai of a uh, Portulacaria afro. Right. Elephant food. One of our volunteers, Tom Gatz, he's he did these for us and. And we had them at the last sale and people seem to like them. So we'll probably continue to do those. I remember seeing these in the last time. Oh, well, I've got some. Are these a uh, monkey tail? Yeah, little uh, little four inch potted ones, so some small ones. And we should have some bigger ones too. Let's see what else is in here. Got some, some of the aloe? seedlings that we've been starting. Um, the names on there are not are not the right plants. That's just the old pot. But we've got, a, I think there's aloe excelsa, aloe... Um, this aloe dichotoma there. These are seedlings that we've grown here that will should be ready in the future. That's really cool looking. Look at that. I love how compact they are. Yeah, they're and these were these were from garden seeds, so this is gonna be something a garden signature in the future. Oh, there's a huge uh, uh there's a huge Dioscoria elephantipes here. Oh from Botanic Wonders, of course. <laughs> that makes sense. Let's take a look at that. It's got a really nice trunk on it already. I can't see it. Oh, look at that. I don't know how much these are. These gotta be, these have to be hundreds. <laughs> these have to be three to five hundred at least, I would say. Yeah. Look, 
450, okay. Yeah, I think that's that's huge. That's what it's supposed to be. I mean, that's just what it's supposed to be priced at. Is there some uh, extra Fagoroides? They're, it's not their best looking time of the year, as you know, but um, these will be something we'll have out at the sale too. I'm gonna have a lot more uh, the, the kind of the packy call trees, the different types of Berseras and Fucarias, things like that, that we don't always have, which I personally like. So we're gonna mm -hmm. continue to try to put some of those things out there and grow them out for the future. So look for more of that in the future. Is that Adenia in the back, the green? It is, it is. So those are quite uh, hard to find as well, I would say. Yeah, so we'll, we'll try to have more and more of that stuff. It takes time. Um, we definitely have a lot of adeniums, but this too is not their best looking time of the year. So we've sorted through and picked out what we think are the best looking ones for the sale and we'll have a lot more in the future. What is this guy doing here? Yeah, this a special little Euphorbia obesa that for some reason decided to be a multi plant. <laughs> is that a collection plant or is that for sale? That's actually gonna be not for sale. That's going to be for our auction. We're going to, we have an auction, a fundraiser, um, the dinner on the desert fundraiser. And one of the suppliers, when they delivered their plants, they delivered that with it. So I need to always have my eye on the ones that are not for sale. Always stuff that's not for sale is what I, what I see. And this is a big table of Pachycormus discolor, which again is not something you regularly see at, at many nurseries. So we'll have more, many more in the future. This is a plant I love and uh, hopefully. Hopefully you'll see them at the spring sale. I think there was a big one, at least at the old location for Arizona cactus sales. They had one there, yeah. I don't know if they moved it to the new location or not. But I think it's a great, if you like Boojum trees, that's a good one to think about getting. Also a Baja plant. Let's see, ooh, look at these lithops. There's like uh, 25 per pot, I would say, something like that. I know we've seen these in the past and look, they're changing their leaves. Is that fairy castle and in a very cool Aloe pig peglera peglere. It's so blue. If I wasn't terrified of murdering them, I would get one, but I don't trust aloe for me anymore. <laughs> Too bad you're yeah. missing out. I know that that's very cool. You can see more adenium in the back, some mellow cactus. Oh, some very cool stuff back here. Look at this super exclusive drive. We're on our way to the second location for more plants that don't need as much protection from critters. So stuff like euphorbia and uh, some aloe that they tend to leave alone for the most part. Oh, well, we can see the little area right there. I've never been back here before, so <laughs> it's a nice privilege for us to... There's the butterfly like, pavilion for reference if you oh, know the garden behind okay, it. Okay, okay, understand. So that's the butterfly pavilion, so we're behind that area. This is so exclusive. And rough road, too. Yeah. Oh my gosh, is that a boojum? It is, that one's going out to the sale. That's cool. That one's... 4,000? 4,500. 4, if you want a nice big... I think that's on par. I think Arizona Cactus Seals had one about... Wait, but there's more than one plant in there. $4,500 if anybody wants this huge boojum and it has multiple uh, trunks in it. There's like four or five trunks. I say that's a steal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got some toad. Discount stuff that's going to end up out of the sale. Oh, this is some nice stuff. It's totem pole cactus. It's $15 for this thing. That's, oh my gosh. This is a gr this is a steal. I mean, you put, if you are looking for landscape plants, look at these seven dollars and fifty cents for that one, just because it got kind of burned at the top, which is what my totem pole looks like in the backyard, and I paid full price for that. I got some Sunita. Oh. Pretty proud of pretty proud of these. These are our furthest along in our tree aloes that we've been growing from the garden seed. These are pushing three years now. And, um, you know, they're close to two feet tall, some of them. So these will be at the sale. I should have a good sampling of these as well. It's only, it's $90 for something this big. This is not a one gallon. It's, it's, oh, three gallon. There we go. Three. I'm surprised how fast they grow. Yeah, these, these also started from Steve Plath, started these for us, and we got them as one gallon. So we've grown them out since then. Um, but this, this area doesn't have nearly as much because it is fully exposed. Mm -hmm. I don't have a fence around it. 
so I've over time kind of trial and error figured out what they leave alone, the rabbits and, and so forth. And for the most part, this area has um, been left alone. But you, then they'll, like you were just talking about, they'll, they get desperate. They'll yep. eat a euphorbia or, or chomp on an aloe or something like that. So uh, I noticed that there's some wires running on that uh, along the top. Is that for putting shade cloth in the summer? Yeah, I pull the shade cloth off in the winter it's accessible enough to get up there and do that because then I can get some of that extra sun because I've got a great big tree behind us that provides some nice shade uh, but in the winter it's almost too much shade with the shade and the, and the shade clock but uh, we also have a, a sampling of some some ocotillos, sea grown ocotillos, sea grown um, the Focaria mcduglii all these will be out at the sale too these are about a year about a year old uh, and they came from the garden too so more you can see things. Like yeah, back there, some like big, probably like Polygona slash Harita type, like this one. Maybe hybrid, some totem poles. You can see the orange tags on some of these. Oh, very nice. So the critters don't tend to chomp on the, like the Akatio? No, I've been, you know, occasionally you'll see it, but it, you know how they do it. it. You probably have plants at home where they're, They'll take a sampling of everything and just ruin everything just enough that it gets you angry. <laughs> they do the same thing here. They'll, they think they taste and then they say, no, that's not so good. But then they'll taste the next one and the next one and the next one. It's always those rare things that you love so much. But no, for the most part, it's been safe out here. And um, and I do cover these if it gets significantly cold, like in the mid-20s, I'll, I'll cover the, the aloes with uh, some frost cloth. You just throw it directly over the plants? Yeah, and then sort of tuck it tuck it under the pots and uh, and I, I think this winter we did it once over where we had an extended period of some cold temperatures so we can we have one more area we can go look at okay let's go take a look look we're in this what kind of cart is this it's so fun yeah it's an electric cart they're real helpful for our jobs and pulling yeah. stuff around and they're not as fast as the cars that want to go around us so we right we get honked every now and then. Okay. <laughs> It's a beautiful early March day and it feels very much like spring. There's the back of the wildflower trail there as we're passing. You see we put fencing around that recently yeah. too to try to manage the mostly the rabbits. If I were a rabbit I would eat everything because there's, there's nothing else to eat. Especially when the summer is so hot and everything's dead. <laughs> I would eat anything. Yeah. Full of water all yeah. <laughs> the, you can see the really early stage. Oh, you already did a little yeah, video. Yeah, a little bit, but this is nice to, to get it from yeah, you. Yeah, now they're done. And you can see the tents the back there. Those will all be filled with plants in about, well, from the time I post this video, in about four or five days. So the the sale starts on Thursday for, or is it Wednesday for members only? Um, it's Thursday, March 14th is, is that Thursday. For members? For members only and, and uh, reservations are required. I think that day is pretty, pretty much full already. So, um, but there are plenty of spots, particularly around the weekend, which is the, the 16th and 17th. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday are open to the general uh, general public, but you do have to get reservations and it's free. You just gotta reserve a spot. The garden just wants to make sure everybody has a parking spot. But if you do make a reservation, do try to make it if you can. Ooh, so now we're actually in the garden grounds, kind of in the back. Yeah, this is a greenhouse that was built about three or four years ago and uh, this houses the collection plants, our collection plants. That could be a tour for another day. Oh my gosh, if we could do that someday, that would be so awesome. I'll have microphones by then. More exclusive tour. Oh, I've never been inside it. Whoa! Oh, I see the Peter plants. You do? These must, are these Peter plants? Uh, those were yeah. Yeah, these. <laughs> I have one. Of, I have one of these. Uh, <laughs> it's a multifolia. I got one of these. One of the sale. Uh, this, this must be Sholandii. Yeah. This got to be Peter plants. <laughs> How warm. I, I use for propagation and also for housing some of the 
more tender things from the winter. So that's why they've been in here. And they, but, but most of this stuff will go out to the sale and, uh, and be available at the sale. So I'm Euphorbia obesa. Oh, this is so fun. So is it Manfreda or Mangave uh -huh. maybe? Let's take a look. Some Gasteria. Oh, Dudleia. Do Dudleia do okay here? I think that's Dudleia, is it? Yeah. Yeah, this is actually the native one right here. Wait, native to here? Not to here, oh, okay. here, but to Ar in Arizona. Um, this is a plant from Steve Plath. And um, I'd have to check with him on exactly where it grows, but... Uh, but there are some native Dudleyers. What? Yeah. I had no idea. They must be in coo cooler parts. Yeah, somewhere. or in little niches and rocks or a little higher elevation. Okay, that's something I had no idea that we have. Arizona has native Dudleyas. I had no idea. Beautiful stinkies. Uh, stinkies over here. Very beautiful. Oh, we got some caudiciforms. And more most likely Peter W's plants. So monodenium. Wow, these are so cool. More euphorbia. So some of this will end up at the sale. Others are still kind of growing out. There's some examples of some aloes that I've been growing. So these are some aloes that the garden has been growing or Kenny's been growing. So cute. See more euphorbia. Oh, in the back, there's some very, very heavily variegated plants. Yeah, those are neat. Those were bulbils from um, a plant in the garden, Agave Joe Hoke, which is a Desmidiana hybrid uh, or cultivar from the Desmidiana. I'm not sure if they're going to live or not yeah. because they don't have there's very no much. Yeah, there's not much green in there, but some have little, little stripes, and I'm just hanging on to them. I think a few of them have. Have succumbed but um, we'll see what we end up with <laughs> wow, that, that's incredible but sometimes you know sometimes you just try it and see what happens and you can see some of them turned green they just went back and reverted back to the normal one but can i walk over there yeah, and do a close-up yeah i'll just do a close-up real quick some more oh okay <laughs> some more euphorbia wow look at these setups that they have so professional these are some baby that are about Oh my gosh, old. baby boojum. Baby boojum. You can see all these little tiny babies. Oh, beautiful. Some more. There's some different types of pack of podiums. I don't think I'll have them at the sale because they're just leafing out. But these were grown. I grew these, started these last year. So these are a pecopodium. Oh, they look good. Like that looks great. These look great. Okay, let's see. Look at this uh, variegation. They're almost completely white. It's so unusual. You can see, so he's trying to see which ones of these will survive. It's amazing. And it's interesting. Oh, this is the pretty. Ones that reverted back to the green color, they're, you know, five times the size of these other little right. ones that, that's what chlorophyll does. <laughs> right. Right. But some that have maintained some of that pattern. That's really cool. More plants. I see some astrophora. Oh, they've got the heat mats. You see, these are right. heat mats. Some different types of aloes I'm starting. That's uh, Pachycerus weberi. Oh. That's a uh, uh, about a year old. We'll be repotting those soon. Very cute. So jealous of the setup. <laughs> I'm growing it, my plants out of my kitchen. <laughs> There's another direction of plants. Yeah, most, oh, most of this will be out at the sale. Wow, this is beautiful. This is definitely a, probably a Peter plant. Probably all Peter plants. Plant sale material. <laughs> ah, this is the stuff that I don't know at all, except some euphorbia in the back. Some soft leaf succulents, which you all know how I feel about them. This looks like some more production areas. 
production. Oh, look at these babies. Yeah, these will these will be the next generation of things you'll see out at the sale. And all these were from seed I collected, and we're growing out. And hopefully, it will be in one gallons before too long. Um, but some things that you don't always regularly see out in the trade. All right, y'all, I'm back at my car. I really hope you enjoyed that exclusive behind the scenes tour of the Desert Botanical Spring Plant Sale. And Kenny sent me home with this gift of this gigantic parodia or noto cactus. It's in a like a three gallon pot and there's little volunteers inside. This is going to sitting on a very special area in my shade house. Hopefully I can keep it alive. I hope that those of you who are in the Phoenix area and who love plants do get your tickets to the Desert Botanical Spring plant sale. Uh, you can see that these tents will be filled with plants in just about four or five days from the time that I post this video. So do come check it out. I hope you all have a great time and I will be back to do some shopping, so do look forward to a shopping video. Take care, y'all. Bye-bye. <laughs>